Today we are going to continue on our coloring. In the previous uh, videos, uh, we learned how to do the color wheel. On the one after, we learned how to keep our primary colors in the middle and add white to them gradually and add black to them gradually. Same thing for our secondary color and tertiary color. I mean, you have more tertiary color. You got uh, three more, but I only chose three of them for the uh, demonstration here. Uh, so just referring to terminology, when you add white to a hue, hue is your color, your main color. If you add white to it, you're tinting your paint. And if you add black to the same color, you're shading it. And if you do add gray, you're toning it, which we are not covering yet at this level. All right, so let's move on. And today uh, I'm going to show you how to practice your coloring using the handouts you have. So everybody received a copy of this and there are a bunch of things that we've been going through. And now we are going to look at the shading section and this is the page and you're going to just color right on top of this sheet same with the following pages you want to just use them as your exercise right so uh, you can use them once you're ready then you can get actually onto your own uh, drawing now before i actually get started there that would be a while uh, and i probably record and put it to fast forward you could just see it really quickly the whole process but here's what i want to share with you there are a few different techniques uh, for adding water the one that we have been using so far for all of these guys it's been pretty opaque so we use a lot of paint and a little bit of water and mainly we did that because we are not working on watercolor paper but if you do have the option of working on watercolor paper, which you do for your final assignment, uh, you want to introduce more water to your uh, coloring. And what I will do, uh, you could pick really any color. I may actually just start with, uh, maybe I start with the red there. Uh, everything else is the same. I have my water. I'm back to the classroom here, so my tools are a little different from what I had recording at my own studio. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to my palette. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of red, mixing it, so it's pretty light, right? And I could add even more water, which I will using a different brush. There you go. I want to show you a few different techniques here before we get there. All right, so step one, I'm going to wet my paper. And I'm really not doing any specific shape, just the background color, right? And then I want you to pay attention to what happens to my paint. As soon as I put down my paint, it starts to run. And that's pretty cool. You could use this really effectively in fashion illustration. This technique is called wet on wet. So as you can see, as simple as that, I could create a few shades rather than adding white to my paint and tinting it where we did in the previous video. Here, I'm just using my water uh, to make the color lighter. And if I want to go back and do a little darker, I grab some more paint and I just put it at that one corner. And really, this is not any specific design or shape. I'm just showing you how the paint reacts. Uh, so, and if, if now I want to make this even darker, now I could refer to my shading, which we did previously, and I could add a little bit of black to get a darker shade, more black and absolutely black. In fashion illustration, we always use black as an outline and showing details. And you would want to use a really fine brush. Um, I will show all of that to you while actually I work on the sketches. Uh, but something to keep in mind is that 
when your paint is this wet you don't want to do any outlining you have to let it sit and dry before you come back for outlining because it has a lot of sitting and waiting in the middle i tend to work with multiple projects at the same time i usually have uh, two three four five different illustrations lined up and i just do the skin on one moving to the next one by the time i finish the skin on the the fourth one the first one is ready to go then i come back at the hair color so on and so forth different parts of the clothing now while this is wet i'm gonna add a touch of black to create a little bit more shading and when you watch me for the actual coloring of the sheet uh, i probably mute myself and i will not be recording my voice so you actually just see me in action uh, i realize that re recording these videos take a long time and for you guys i don't want you to be watching a 45 minutes video so that's why i decided to fast forward through the part that i could actually afford to do that so i'm just gonna add a touch of black to the color i made i will remove some of it because the same as before i don't want to um, kind of completely destroy my paint i'm gonna grab a little bit of it put it in a separate space and i will grab a little bit of black and you see the black is such a strong color that it completely take over so I just needed a touch and while my watercolor is still wet or actually acrylic is still wet I'll go right on the edge and create that first shadow now if I want to make it darker I grab some more black I'll go on that corner right so this is i mean because i was explaining this is almost getting dry usually when i do my illustration i don't speak much so i get to do this a little quicker but that's all right you get to see the result you could um if you want to do a uh, dry technique what you'll do uh, i actually make a patch here and return to it in about five minutes or so so i'm going to make I'll show you a different technique so this is I didn't wet the base first unlike the other version I'm just coloring that section and I'm not going to do any shading on it while it's wet so I'll do a wet on dry I'll return to this I'll see you guys shortly bye all right, so I have been waiting for this. This is almost dry, um, but you could wait even longer for have it, uh, to have this completely dry. I'm going to create my second wash. I would use the same paint, add a little bit of black, which I actually did earlier today. So here is my second wash. And because this is already dry, it's not going to spread. As you can see I can get really clear edges sometimes you want to use this technique if you're showing um, a deep reflection right say say you're um, illustrating satin or leather to render those materials you want to have really sharp edges unlike um, silk or sheer fabric which I would use wet on wet technique here this would be more like heavier material and reflecting more lights. Okay, so... And then I can wait until this is dry again. I'll go create a darker shade, so on and so forth. You could also use this technique if you're showing a certain pattern on your fabric. Say if there is a texture, a pattern of print or something like that. You could definitely use the same technique once this is dry you could also come back to it using pencil crayon and do some shading which i'll kind of go through this as we go through the lesson together but that's it for now i'm going to get us started on actual model here so you could use any color you want uh, i think we kind of covered all the primary and secondary and tertiary colors I'm gonna go with a tinted color this time. 
to give you a little different idea. So if you tint red, um, you can get a variety of pink color. And I'm going to use one of these pinks. I could either create that color before I get it started, but because we, I'm kind of concerned about the time of recording, I'm going to use the pink that is in my palette here. So I'll just use that one. My process is going to be kind of light. I'm going to, I'm not going to add a lot of white to this, or actually no white. I'm going to use water uh, to uh, kind of make my color lighter and in order to deepen that pink I will be using the red and gradually from there I'm gonna add black and more black all the way to deep deep black so let's get it started okay I'm going to use these two I'm gonna start with the pink. Before I get this started, I purposefully uh, chose these ones for you because they already have been shaded. So you have some kind of a guideline to go with. As you can see, the light is reflecting from above, lightening up this upper area and this area. So underneath here, we have some shadows and the shadows are different kinds of gray from light all the way to very dark. Then we have some wrinkles which we will go over with actual black black using your very fine brush, the, the sharpest one, that one. And then for the skirt you see that we have like light, we have medium gray, dark gray and all the way to black. So before you get it started, take a good look at this. In your version, when you're actually illustrating your own sketches, you don't have that guideline. So for that, you gotta refer to the video on light and shadow to get some ideas and decide where you want to put your light source. So if your light source is on the right hand side, everything on the right hand side is going to be very light, medium, gradually darkening all the way to black. Right? So. This is some kind of a study. It's not cheating. You're just uh, getting used to thinking of shadows and light. Another important thing I want to point out, you'll see me that I will be leaving some of the areas absolutely white. You don't want to cover your entire design in color. Even though the color is really, really light, you don't want to do that. Um, you want to keep some of the spots um, as white as the paper. Now I'm just going to grab some water, start a new section in my palette, grabbing some pink. I'm making a very light color pink, not too dense, but it is kind of watery and that's okay. I'm going to gradually start from top. Just adding some color, going right over the shadows and everything. that is done I'm going to mix a little deeper color so this time I would add less water 